Hello everyone, today we got some new looks at some Shadow Keep stuff, specifically related to the seasonal artifact, along with a new trailer and cinematic. We are in spoiler ish territory here, folks. You have been warned. First off, keep in mind that this is pre release Shadow Keep footage. We've seen things change before their release, so everything in this video is subject to change. The main stuff we saw were some of the mods that are coming on the seasonal artifact. So let's just take a look at the mods themselves. At the very end of the artifact, we get to see four of the five mods that will be available. Heavy Finisher costs seven energy to slot onto an armor piece and generates heavy ammo, quote, for your fire team when you use a finisher to kill an enemy but it costs half of your super in order to proc it. Oppressive Darkness costs six to slot and makes your void grenades add a weaken effect to enemies, potentially similar to a hammer strike debuff. The percentage of this effect is unknown. Arc Battery costs five to slot and gives an overshield and reduced cooldown during activation of all arc class abilities. Thunder Coil costs six to slot and gives bonus damage for all arc melee abilities and refunds super energy on finisher final blows. It does look like, at least in some of the examples in this video, finishers cost a little bit of super energy to use, although in one of the clips where the player has a full super, it doesn't cost them anything, so maybe they had this mod on, I'm not really sure just yet. Note that none of these mods have an elemental affinity. In fact, none of the mods on the seasonal artifact seem to have any sort of elemental affinity. So you can use them wherever you want, although there are weapon and armor specific mods. Looks like there are enhanced reload mods for hand cannons, SMGs, bows, fusions, and auto rifles for this particular season, and they all cost one to slot. Column 2 looks like it features anti-barrier mods where you get shield piercing rounds designed to bypass combat defenses which are strong against barrier champions and overload rounds strong against overload champions where uninterrupted fire grants bullets that cause disruption, delaying ability energy regen and lowering combatant damage output. These will be important for a new thing that we'll talk about in a moment. This is what the symbols in the gameplay by the weapons mean, in case you were wondering what those were. The triangle is anti-barrier, the circle is overload, and the square is... Nah, I don't know yet. In terms of progression on the seasonal artifact, I'm not 100% on all of the details yet, since all we have is this footage, but... For starters, as you unlock mods, that counter on the bottom goes up. To start, there's a requirement of zero. You unlock one mod, you get the next column, then you need to unlock four total to get the next, and then seven, and then 10. As for how often you'll get a mod unlock available, not 100% sure just yet. It could be every time you get a level. That does seem kind of quick, at least assuming the leveling experience isn't changing too drastically from now in terms of how often you get a level. And then we also have the ability to reset our artifact. I assume that's to let us get the rest of the mods. Although it's not clear if you get to keep the mods you had before the reset or if you'll have to re-grind levels to get your unlocks again. We don't know any of this nitty gritty information yet. That's about it for the seasonal artifact. We're gonna move on to more spoilery stuff now like exotics and the map of the moon. So fair warning, but I do have one more mod related thing and that is the continued return of raid mods. We have one example here where you have a greatly increased chance of finding heavy ammo while you have the voltaic overflow buff, whatever that means. I also found their choice of the word heavy ammo to be interesting. Exotics wise, we saw two in the Gamescom five minute interview footage, one of them being a returning Destiny 1 exotic in Monte Carlo and a new hunter helm called Assassin's Cowl. Where defeating a guardian with a melee attack or PVE combatant with a finisher gives invisibility and restores some shields and health. 
Monte Carlo's expansion icon is not the same as all the other gear though. It has a Vex head for an icon, which matches Season of the Undying, as opposed to all the other symbols, which are for Shadowkeep. At least, this is my impression. Remember, Shadowkeep and Season of the Undying are not the same thing. They are not one and the same. A third exotic was posted on Bungie's media drop, the Phoenix Cradle. This exotic is for Sunspot Titans. Your Sun Warrior benefit lasts twice as long something, something, Sunspot, maybe normal Sunspot or something. Allies who pass through your Sunspot also gain the benefit of Sun Warrior. As for the moon map, seems pretty large for the most part with two landing zones at the north and south. Eris, or someone anyway, looks to be the destination vendor in the sanctuary at the south. There's a new strike in the Scarlet Keep. I wonder if that's going to be a story mission just turned into a strike. We'll see. We also have a new three-player activity in the Nightmare Hunt with three difficulty options scaling from 860 to 920 to 950. The lowest difficulty looks like it has a beneficial modifier. The mid difficulty makes champion enemies get special abilities or maybe just simply spawns them into the activity on top of what seems to be a negative modifier just based on the name. And the hardest difficulty tacks on another negative modifier and locks your equipment. The hardest difficulty does not have matchmaking, but the other two do. Finally, in the Gamescom trailer, the biggest thing that I saw was this Void rocket launcher that spits out what looks like the Void orbs from Slova Bomb. So, kind of have like a Galahorn potential situation going on here. We'll see. That trailer is linked in the description. And that's about it for new information. Without knowing exactly how the seasonal artifact's going to work, I don't want to rush any thoughts out, but I will say that I didn't think it was going to work the way that I think it's going to work, which appears to be entirely mod based. You basically just yoink mods out of the artifact and just throw them in your gear. And that's the deal. As, as far as I know, I thought there would be more of a, you unlock perks on the artifact and then get upgrades to your character kind of deal. I guess unlocking them in the form of mods is basically the same thing and makes it so you have more choice and players are more unique from each other instead of everyone having the same everything. And you actually have to make decisions on what to use instead of just getting everything, which I think is fine. As for the exotics, I liked Monte Carlo back in D1. It's just that you had to use an auto rifle and Monte Carlo as a weapon wasn't spectacular or anything. It was fine but the main perk on it was pretty good. Dealing damage reduced melee cooldown and you had a chance on kill to instantly refresh your melee. With armor 2.0, assuming they keep the same perk, I think there's some pretty good potential for melee based builds using this weapon. So I'm very excited for that. Hopefully auto rifles themselves get a little love to make using Monte Carlo not a bad weapon damage experience. Assassin's Cowl, Turning invisible and getting some health and shields back after a finisher in PvE or a melee kill in PvP. Much more of a defensive exotic. I can see it being a little enticing for PvP, but otherwise, I think it's going to need some help to make it more valuable. Good way to ensure that you'll come away from a melee win with a lot of health, but mm, I'm not sure. If you're asking for a super hot take, I'd say this is going to be in the lower tier of exotics, but... Eh, who knows? And that's kind of based on how strong we are right now, though. Maybe defensive exotics are going to be better in Shadowkeep since Guardian Power seems like it's going to get toned down a little bit. Maybe if there's a lot of finisher-based mods that you can slot into your armor and you can just hop around getting finisher kills and helping your team, maybe this could be insane. Uh, I don't know. The Phoenix Cradle exotic is what I think is going to bring Sunspot Titans into the limelight to some degree. Allies can benefit from sunspots. Hello? Double duration sunspots, potentially? In case you're not familiar with sunspots and sun warrior, sun warrior increases all damage, recharges abilities faster, and makes your super last longer. What more do you want? I think sunspots' current problem is that they're stronger in an arena-like setting as opposed to a linear setting. The game moves so fast right now that by the time you get a sunspot chain rolling, 
you're already on to the next section of the map. I think if the game slows down a bit in that it's harder to kill stuff or there's more arena style activities, sunspots are gonna be great. And if this exotic can't help sunspots, then I don't think much else will outside of ridiculous buffs. The only issue I have with this exotic is that it's going to be a staple exotic for Bottom Tree Sunbreaker. If you're using Bottom Tree, you're using this no matter what. I don't like exotics as band-aids. If an exotic takes a super or subclass branch from bad to usable, I think that's a problem with the super or subclass branch, and an exotic shouldn't just exist to band-aid that problem. I don't think this exotic is necessarily solving the problem of sunspots, since I think sunspots are pretty good already, but this exotic is a brain-dead easy decision to make. Tough to say what the nightmare hunt is going to be, but I like that there are some more difficulty options. My concern, until proven otherwise, is how are you going to entice me to play higher difficulties and keep me playing them? That is my question for the entirety of Destiny. How are you going to incentivize max level difficulty content and stuff like that? That's what I want to know. Both of the trailers were pretty cool. I like that there's a couple of things going on with Shadowkeep and Season of the Undying. Again, they're not the same thing. If the past is anything to go by, then Shadowkeep is probably going to be wrapped up in the campaign, while the rest of the season will focus on the Vex to some degree, or maybe Shadowkeep leads into the Black Garden Raid or something like that. Not sure. I know there's a bunch of leaks and stuff out there right now. I'm not going to talk about that stuff here, although I'm sure people in the comments are going to, so just be aware of that if you're trying to not see any of that stuff. That's about it. I've linked everything referenced in this video in the description. Uh, I didn't hate anything here. All seems pretty neat, and I'm looking forward to seeing some more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.